Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Legacy. Today we're looking at Death and Taxes. Death and Taxes, or DNT, is a tempo deck that uses various hate bears and mono denial to disrupt the opponent, such as Thalia taxing casting costs of spells while applying pressure with reasonable beatdown creatures, especially Stoneforge Mystic. Various cards can be put in the deck, but DNT always includes Thalia, Stoneforge, and Aether Vial. Thalia is particularly good in Legacy where spells rule the roost and is especially important in combo matchups. Her mono denial is supplemented by Wasteland and Rashadden Port. Stoneforge gives the deck a much needed mid-range game plan for when the taxes aren't effective or fast enough. Spirit of the Labyrinth is uniquely good in Legacy where it shuts off cantrips and other card draw effects. It's especially good against Brainstorm and Jace the Mind Sculptor since it changes their text to draw a card put two back. It can be brutal to ambush a Brainstorm with a Vildin Spirit. Swords to Plowshares, Skyclave Apparition, and Solitude make up the deck's removal suite. Mother of Runes protects the creatures, including herself, from removal. She's especially crucial for keeping important creatures like Thalia and Stoneforge safe. Recruiter of the Guard can find almost any creature in the deck and enables DNT to run one of silver bullets like Cathar Commando, Containment Priest, Lion Sash, Sanctum Prelate, etc. Flicker Wisp uniquely deserves its own analysis since it's a multi tool that does a ton of things. It can re-trigger ETB effects, reset Aether Vial, reset Cauldra or Batter Skull if their germ died, untap a land or attacker, temporarily clear away a blocker or hate piece, protect your creatures from removal, kill tokens including Merit Lage and the illusions left behind by Skyclave Apparition, and in combination with Yorion, becomes a never-ending Blink Bonanza. There's just a ton of things to do with it, although it's much more useful with Aether Vial than without. Aether Vial lets you get ahead on mana and use your lands for other things, or to double spell, and lets you flash in threats at instant speed and slip creatures past counter spells. You can ambush card draw with Spirit of the Labyrinth, find and immediately play a creature with Recruiter of the Guard, make Flicker Wisp incredible, etc. You can keep using Rashadden Port to tap down the opponent's land in their upkeep while not falling behind yourself. Use your mana to activate equipment or Stoneforge, Eternalize Timeless Dragon, and so on and so forth. Timeless Dragon is a larger threat that can block flyers, being geared towards the Delver matchup. It can also be made into a token without getting countered. It seems to be stock in DNT lists now. However, my personal opinion is that it's too expensive for what it does, and against Delver it still doesn't stop Murktide. Yorion builds of the deck have become the stock version. While you can build DNT without Yorion, the data points to it having better results. There are just a ton of useful things to blink in the same vein as Flicker Wisp. Although not nearly as common, some versions of DNT splash red, primarily for Magus of the Moon and Pyroblast. Financially speaking, DNT is one of Legacy's cheaper decks, being mono white and requiring no reserve list cards, and can be built from scratch for around $1,000. Sideboarding and Weaknesses The taxing effects of the deck are not absolute and can be overcome if the game goes too long. Who's on the player draw can determine the winner just by having Thalia come down one turn slower. Therefore, the deck wants to apply pressure and prioritizes running creatures over their non-creature versions with the same effects. That being said, there are still important spells for various matchups and the sideboard is composed of many more spells than creatures. The usefulness of many individual cards in D&T vary wildly by matchup and the course of individual games. Here are some examples. Thalia is obviously great in heavily spell-based matchups like Delver, Ant, and Sneak and Show, but is much worse against creature-heavy decks like Maverick, Elves, and the Mirror. Spirit of the Labyrinth is great against blue cantrip decks and anything that draws additional cards, and useless against things like Cloud Post, Mono Red Prison, and Turbo Depths. Mother of Runes is great against decks with removal, decks like Delver or Control, and terrible against decks with little removal, usually combo decks like Ant. The deck is mono white and thus lacks access to counter spells. It can fare poorly against fast combo, especially if it doesn't draw early mono denial like Thalia. DNT runs poorly the later the game drags on. The early mono denial plan eventually runs out as the opponent draws more lands. DNT itself has a lot of lands and air, that is, cards that are dead or much less useful when drawn later in the game, such as Aether Vial, Mother of Runes, Thalia, etc. It also has very few catch up cards, cards that draw more cards like Expressive Iteration, Sylvan Library, Jace, Cantrips, and so on. Because it has few catch-ups, the deck has a nasty habit of losing ground against one-for-one -one plays in the early game when facing control or mid-range, then getting overtaken by value cards. I'd argue that D&T players should avail themselves of the Monarch mechanic via Palace Jailer and Court of Grace, at least post-board if not main. The problem with Monarch is that it can be bad against opposing creature decks, especially Delver which has many evasive flyers. However, it's great against other decks with few creatures or which don't attack well, such as lands and blue control. 
On a personal note, I'd argue against playing Cataclysm in the sideboard. I understand why it's there, but in practice it usually doesn't do what you want. In my many games playing D&T, I was always underwhelmed by it. Tips and Tricks You can activate Aether Vial on upkeep if you want to flash in a creature with a specific mana value and uptick the counter on it. You can activate Aether Vial to put in taxing effects like Thalia or Spirit of the Labyrinth in your main phase, forcing the opponent to respond before the creature enters if they want to do something like cast Brainstorm. If you Vial in Phyrexian Revoker, the opponent has to activate whatever ability you're shutting off before Vial resolves. Once Revoker hits the board, it's too late. You can Vial in Flicker Wisp in response to an Evoked Solitude to keep it around and get its trigger a second time. Even if you have nothing to flash in with Aether Vial, you can still activate it just to see if your opponent does anything in response, potentially bluffing them into making a play they otherwise didn't want to make. If Batter Skull's Germ is gone and you want to bounce and replay it with Stoneforge, you can activate Stoneforge and hold priority, then bounce Batter Skull. That way, if they kill Stoneforge in response, you'll still get your Batter Skull back. Similarly, if you control Stoneforge and Aether Vial, you can activate Stoneforge and hold priority, then flash in a second Stoneforge so that the equipment you search for will be put into play without giving your opponent a window for removal. I see many players too reticent to attack with Mother of Runes. While it's correct to leave her back if you need to protect something important, such as Thalia or Stoneforge, sometimes you have nothing you'd care to protect or it's unlikely your opponent has removal and you should just attack. Mother of Runes doesn't just protect your creatures, it can slip an attacker through board stalls if all of the opposing creatures are the same color. It's important to know what to name with Sanctum Prelate in each matchup. The correct number is usually 1 or 0, but some decks are different. For example, you may want to choose 3 against Sneak and Show. Also remember that choosing 1 shuts off your own swords. Umazawa's Jite can do many things, although it's usually used to negative small enemy creatures. It's one of the best cards in creature matchups and can be a priority to grab with Stoneforge even over Cauldra. If equipped to a creature with first strike like Thalia, the Jite trigger will resolve before other combat damage, which can be used to various ends such as reducing the stats of another blocker. Karakas can protect Thalia from removal and is especially good if you can Vial her back in immediately. It also lets you keep reusing Yorion's Blink by bouncing and replaying it. Palace Jailer's Exile ability returns the creature when that player becomes the Monarch, not when Jailer dies. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Death and Taxes. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date deck list, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.